discussion with Arif from Matt Plus Accountants. Uh, I am a property developer and have been in the property industry since 10 years. And Arif is a qualified chartered accountant. And what I thought today I'll talk to Arif about is uh, this whole COVID situation. Now, there's been a lot of tax incentives, reliefs, grants and measures being introduced by the Chancellor of Exchequer. Uh, we are going to try and demystify uh, some of that and We'll specifically talk about that in relevance to property, residential and commercial uh, property uh, landlords. So, um, Arif, do you want to do a very quick introduction uh, about yourself? And then I can sort of um, fire away some of the questions that I have, the burning questions I have. Yeah, hi. So, you've, I think you've already introduced me anyway. Uh, I'm a child accountant member of four professional bodies. And perhaps today, let's uh, demystify, as you mentioned, and see what benefits us as an employee or self-employed or anybody to do with the property sector could benefit from the Chancellor's announcement on 23rd of March, which was further amended just a few, few days ago, with more uh, changes coming up. So let's put perhaps more light on Perfect. So my first question, Arif, is from a uh, PAYE point of view. So I'm a P just to give you a bit of context around it, I have a uh, incorporated business, a portfolio, which I incorporated because of Section 24 a few years ago. And in light of that, I'm an employee of my business. Uh, as a PAYE, are there any measures been introduced uh, in this uh, situation for me? To answer that very e the obvious question and the very easy question, perhaps, I would, I, would, I would rather say, have you heard of the job retention scheme, which is 80% of the wages? Okay. So to start off with, is the word follow. So do you know what the follow mean? I think it's better to just clarify it a little bit. So in that case, follow is a temporary leave. So you are giving your own employee, or perhaps if you are an employee, just like you mentioned, you are director of your own company, you could follow yourself, even though you are director. This particular director of personal service company question wasn't that clear when the Chancellor of Exchequer announced it on 23rd of March, but it has been now much more clearer just a few days ago. So that said, anybody who's on the payroll, it has to be on the payroll. So you should be running a PAY scheme using a PAY reference number, and you are giving yourself or any employee a salary through the PAY scheme, then you should be able to follow that particular employee provided there is no work or the person cannot work. And that follow period has to be a minimum of three weeks. Now, if your director, government has mentioned that you are allowed to carry out your statutory duties but you are not supposed to do the work for the business. And if that is the case, whatever the salary were, as of end of 28th of February 2020, you could get up to 80% of the wages. And that was what the early announcement were. What has been now updated is that you could get further the employer's national insurance contribution element and plus also the automatic enrollment pension contribution as well. So on top of the 80%, which is capped at 2,500, you would yeah. get these two small amounts for so employer's national insurance contribution and the automatic enrollment pension contribution of the employer for that particular employee, which was not initially introduced, but this has been more clarified recently. Been added on. So basically more money has been given effectively to the PAY. Okay, very, very... Uh... Earlier, directors of the smaller business such as yourself were more conscious about the fact that I could not be following myself. I could follow my employees, but not myself. In that case, would I be losing out on the government 80% scheme? And there were a lot of uh, speculation around the fact that no, I may not be able to. But now it has been clarified, everybody can. You just need to have a PAY scheme. However, if you are just running a paper exercise of putting a wage onto the account, but not running the payroll scheme, you would not be eligible for it. So you need to have a PAY reference number. A legitimate uh, money that goes out of your business account into your PAY uh, account basically every month. Okay, and how do we claim for this? That is the golden question, a million dollar question, which is yet to come. Government has confirmed it should come by mid-April to latest by end of April to assess and to come up with the guidelines of how to apply, for which all the employers in the, in the UK are waiting for. Perfect. That's great. It's good to know that we have something to, to wait to come along. So that's fine. Uh, second thing is, um, what about uh, the self-employed? So that could be potentially uh, people who haven't incorporated yet? 
Yes, so self-employed were earlier not covered by the Chancellor's uh, announcement on 23rd of March with a lot of discussions and a lot of uh, unhappiness surrounding self-employed people. It has now been further confirmed just last week that self-employed could also get the same 80% of your net profit. So there are certain conditions as usual. So to be self-employed, you need to be self-employed. So you need to be running a business as self-employed. Now, what is a business? A trading business, which I'll explore further. But if you are self-employed and if you've been filing your self-assessment tax returns, then you could get up to 80% of your net profit, what you have declared in the last year, provided you are continuing your self-employment business, but you could not continue because of the COVID-19 crisis. Now, self-employed does not mean having a property uh, and declaring UK property income, unfortunately. That is not self-employment. However, in relation to the property business sector, who could be classed as self-employed? I would say a state agent, because that's a trading business. Uh, rent to rent people, so those who are doing, that's a business. So anything which can be classed as a business. And uh, perhaps property management companies. Yeah, so those yeah, are yeah. Letting agents. Letting agents. Letting yeah. agents, anybody. So these are businesses, but if you are, if you have nine properties and if you're filing tax returns with UK property income, I doubt if that would go on the self-employment criteria. That would go on the UK property income. So for that, you have the benefits uh, whereby if I mean, you could have the benefit of the uh, holiday scheme for the, yeah. uh, your land. But, and the other advantage is that you could only be taxed based on the amount actually received. So say, for example, in these periods, difficult times, your tenants could not pay you. Earlier used to be approval basis, but now since for the last one year, it is cash basis. So if tenant has not paid you the rental income, you're not supposed to pay tax on it. You're not declaring it. So that's that's good benefit. Yeah, okay, perfect. So, uh, and that's basically if you've been filing the SA 302s, right? You, that's how you can tell. So, I mean, if you have not filed, government has been even more lenient. I think they have given up until end of this month for those who have not filed tax returns to file it. So it's so not a minimum period. It could be just one year of SA 302s. That's fine. That's okay as well. Okay. Uh, However, that's it should not be more than fifty thousand pound. If your profit is fifty thousand pound and one pound, then you will not get this eighty percent because HMRC thinks that you are too good to do by yourself anyway. So yeah. you don't need. Money. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's great. Uh, the next question is the business interruption loan. Does that is that relevant to property uh, developers or people owning a property business, landlords? You know. It is applicable to any businesses, not just the developers or property uh, sector clientele, but any businesses. If you think your business has been interrupted, which undoubtedly any, every business has been, you just need to speak to your business bank manager and see whether you could apply for a loan. Uh, any, anywhere between 10 to 40,000 pounds, majority of the lenders are kind of okay to, to apply to, and obviously they would have their own criteria to assess whether you are eligible and to how long and how much you should be getting. In essence, these loans would make it easier for you to apply because government is giving the guarantee for the first year up to 80%. So if the bank were to give you 20,000 pound worth of loan because of the current crisis to help support the cash flow, 80%, 16,000 pound is guaranteed by the government personally. So the lenders risk has been mitigated to only 20%. Yeah. And secondly, you are getting this loan for the first year interest rate for the first 12 months. So that's the help, a cash flow injection by the government to the businesses, to help businesses and to help lenders so that they could be relaxed in terms of their risk assessment criteria, whether this business is good enough to land, uh, get the, grant the loan, because their risk is only 20%. They're underwriting it basically, right? Yes. Yeah. So they're giving personal guarantee. The government is giving personal guarantee. Or 80%, which is great. And after the first year, then you either pay back the loan or you just carry on paying interest after the first year, presumably? On what what terms you've been given by your lender. So if it's a two-year fixed or three years or uh, variable, depending on what you've been offered. Yeah. But first okay. year, you don't pay interest. It's free. Have you had any of your clients successfully apply for this yet? Many have. It, uh, what we have uh, noticed is that it depends on what relationship you normally have with your bank managers uh, as you tend to, if you were to use your normal customer services for any usual uh, high street banks or building society, you would end up getting and waiting in the long, long queue, perhaps even for more than a day at times. So it's best to contact your direct bank manager and see whether you could apply through there. Uh, many have successfully applied. Uh, I'm yet to hear from anyone who could have said that, yes, I've got the loan, but they have applied. 
and is in the process. So, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for that. Uh, and I've also heard about another facility that they're offering, a corporate financing facility. Do you know yes. that? That's primarily for the uh, larger businesses, the group of companies, uh, whereby if they were to have some debts, government could buy their debts, but that's primarily for very large businesses. Right. Okay, yeah. fine. That's great. And so a lot of the things that we've discussed are mainly, I would say, for landlords. Is there anything specific for commercial landlords? So, for example, I uh, own a few freehold uh, properties where some of the uh, some of shops, in which case they can't operate the shops, could be cafes or retail businesses which have been closed down because of you know compulsory lockdown. Any there are grants available for any businesses who operate using premises. As far as you are a business and you operate your business using a business premises for which you have either received a business rates bill in the past or you received a bill stating your business rates have been relieved because you are small business or you're based in rural. So as far as you have a business rates bill or a relief, you could apply for a government grant. And the government grants is, up to, well, minimum is 10,000 pounds if your rateable value is below 15,000 pounds and up to 25,000 pounds if your rateable value is more than that. Earlier, announcement said that you don't need to do any action. Uh, council will contact you to have these grants available to you. Uh, however, we have just heard and the Brand Council and the Harrow Council and there are other councils as well, such as Hillingdon, whereby you need to make an application online. So if you are into these councils and operating your businesses using any business premises, paying business rates or getting business rates relief, go on to your councils, relevant councils that is applicable to you and make an application. You okay. need to make an application. What you would need is your latest business rates bill, which confirms your business account number. Yeah. It confirms the fact that within 10 working days, you should receive your funds as well. So it has started. It has started uh, earlier. It's, it's different to what has been told to us earlier. You have been told that council will contact you, but it's the case of us contacting the client. But either way, if you happen to be any other council areas, it's good to search online to see which particular council that you fall into and see whether they have opened up this application process if they have not contacted you. So it's worth contacting them. So just to clarify, this grant is just effectively uh, money for managing your business, your cash flow. You're not going to have to give this back ever again, right? No. It's just a so grant means something which is given for free. It's a loan which you would give it back. A grant is a grant. It's given for free. That's that's for you to use it. But the only condition is that you need to operate using business premises. And this grant is primarily for those who could not be paying business rates. Because otherwise, the original offer by the government was not to pay any business rates for those who are paying business rates. So if I'm operating a business using a premises, say a restaurant, and my business rate is 17,500, yeah. I will not pay any business rate for the next year. So that was the first offer. But what if I'm too small to pay any business rates? I should not be outside the scope of the government offer. So hence the reason, if I'm not, if I'm not paying any business rates, if I'm paying lower business rates, then I would get this grant of 10,000 and 25,000 pounds. Okay. And so do you call it, does your premises qualify for yes. this? Yeah. And we have recently applied as well. Brilliant. Okay. Well, listen, is there anything you think I may have missed in this conversation? I that I have missed out is the deferment of taxes, which is self-assessment and VAT. So all those, not only just the self-employed people, earlier used to be just for self-employed people, which is again been clarified that it's applicable for all those who file their self-assessment tax return. So anyone and everyone who file their self-assessment tax returns, their next payment on account, which is due on 31st of July, has automatically been deferred till 31st of January 2021. So you do not have to pay any tax that was supposed to be paid on 31st of July. Again, HMRC has confirmed that if you could afford to pay, then you should pay. But if you don't want to, you would not be charged any interest or penalty or charge so that's automatic. You don't have to pay. And the SA302s, yeah, the SA302s basically. SA302. SA302. If you have payment on account, if you don't have payment on account, which means if your tax liability is less than 1,000 pounds, it does not apply to you. But okay. if your tax liability is more than 1,000 pounds, it does apply. So you don't have to pay the payment on account. Then the VAT. So anybody who has to pay the VAT liability from this, from 23rd of March till June, 30th of June, you do not have to pay the VAT liability. You can defer it up until next year which is 31st of March 2021, if I'm not mistaken. 
However, earlier HMRC's position was the fact that you don't have to do anything. It would be automatic, but now they are saying that you need to cancel the direct debit if you have set up a direct debit with the VAT. But don't be don't be alarmed with the fact that what if I have to receive the repayment? Would it be deferred as well? No, you would receive a repayment. But it's just that if you were to pay to HMRC, if you have any VAT liability, that would be automatically, kind of automatically, as far as you cancel your direct debit, HMRC will not charge you any interest or penalties, but you can pay that later, sometime next year. So VAT has to be registered quarterly, right? Yes. So depending on the type of business, you could be filing a VAT on a monthly basis. But majority of the businesses file the VAT quarterly to have the reasonable amount of admin work. So if your VAT return falls into March quarter end or April quarter end, May, June, and you have a VAT liability, you do not have to pay that within one month and seven days. You can defer it up until 31st of March or January 2021. However, make sure if you're paying HMRC by direct debit automatically, it happens every quarter as well, you cancel that. Otherwise, the payment would go out. Okay, perfect. And uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Apart from anything else you think you may want to cover, I think uh, that's been very useful from my from my point of view, from, from a property business owner point of view. Is there anything else at all you want to mention? Well, I would just mention for those uh, uh, paper employees who have not been on the PAY scheme uh, but have been giving themselves a proper wage onto the accounting scheme, I would recommend them to register them for the PAY scheme ASAP and to run the payroll because that would not be, uh, I would say, fraudulent, but that would be in line with what you've been doing it anyway. But that would allow you to claim your 80%. Otherwise, you would not be able to claim the 80% of your wage. Okay. And it is important that you are on the payroll as of February 2020. As far as you have run the payroll for February 2020, you should be able to claim that 80% of your wage. Okay, brilliant. Well, listen, I really, really appreciate taking your time out of your busy day and um, hopefully catch up in a few weeks when things have started to move and maybe there's another you know, set of measures maybe possibly or uh, yeah, some changes and updates to announce. Thank you for your time, Arif. Thank you. Thank you many for your time. Bye-bye.